Duke Gale? A witness? Who? Herbert Gale. But, but that's a lie. You didn't take a thirty-two revolver out of the table drawer? Oh, this is the first time I've even heard of any revolver. Please believe that. You didn't order Philip to put up his hands, and then when he did put up his hands... High above his head? You didn't shoot him from a distance of about fifteen feet? No, no, no. Your fingerprints were on the revolver. You were still holding it in your hand when Herbert brought a policeman. <laughs> It looks as though you've got me, doesn't it? I'm afraid it does. <laughs> Just who is this brother, this Herbert Gale? <laughs> He's the good member of the family. Hey, now then, my dear, now then. I can't tell you. Steady, steady. <laughs> Herbert is the good boy. Well, Philip was the bad one. Younger than Philip. Horribly respectable. Pillar of the church. Never smokes or drinks. Has to work hard because Philip inherited what money they had. <laughs> oh, let me laugh. You don't know how funny it is. Herbert's word certainly carries weight. <laughs> it's carried weight against me, hasn't it? <laughs> Why should he want to get me hanged? Why should he tell such a complete bag of lies? Yes, I uh, wonder why. Every second I imagine I'm going to wake up and find myself back in that living room again. Looking at Philip's body, just standing and staring at it and feeling sick. And of all things to think of at a time like that. Wondering why he was wearing a waistcoat on such a hot day. Hawkins <laughs> of Athens, what an idiot I've been. What a turnip. What a thundering dance. The way of voice. The murdered man was wearing a waistcoat. You told me so yourself. What if I did? The murdered man was wearing a waistcoat on a hot day. Grasp that beautiful fact, my friend. Keep it in splendor before you. Three hours of sheer nightmare, and all because I never thought of the waistcoat. Let me ask you just one thing. What happened to the court exhibits of the Gale case? Mm, as a matter of fact, we've, um, we've still got them. The case was tried and made Hurst decide. You've still got them? Certainly, but what good can they do now? Sir, let me shake your hand. Let me slap you on the back. Let just me... Just wait, my friend. Stop a bit. Quiet. I... I beg your pardon. Have you... Have you forgotten where we are? No. Let's face facts. The prisoner has been told that there's... Well, no hope. Please. I'm sorry, please, but there it is. Please, the cruelest thing you could do now would be to raise hopes that I can't fulfill. You understand that? I understand it only too well. This can't be pleasant for any of us. There's nothing in the evidence that justifies any change of path. Except, of course, that the girl isn't guilty. Can you prove that? To my own satisfaction, yes. I'm afraid that's not good enough. Suppose I proved it to you. Conclusively, mind. Out of evidence you gave me yourself, what would you do? Are you bluffing? No, speak up, man. What would you do? That's easy. Phone the Home Secretary and ask for a stay of execution. There's a private line from my office to his country house. But I warn Dr. you... Dr. Fell, is there any hope for me? Is there any hope? I me? warn you, Fell, they won't accept fancy theories. They'll only accept facts. Tell me, Miss Barton, how tall is the estimable Mr. Herbert Gale? Uh, how tall? Yes. Is he anything like the same height as his brother, Philip? They're about the same height, five feet ten, but I don't see... If I remember correctly, one of the warders told us that Herbert Gale has been hanging about the front gate all night. I should very much like to speak with him. Colonel Andrews, will you send someone out and ask him to come into your office? I can't do that. Why not? It's against regulations. You'd have to get a special pass. Say and write to him. Curse it all. Can't you get it through your correct military head that an innocent person is going to swing in less than two hours? Well, I don't know what you're trying to do, but can you do it? My dear, I can't but tell. you are going to try. I'm going downstairs now. Maybe in a very short time, a certain gentleman will be entering this institution without any need of a pass. But don't hope for anything, my dear. Don't hope for anything. <laughs> Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Less than an hour to go. Oh, why doesn't that warder come and bring the exhibit I want? What's delaying him? Probably he, he can't find the stuff. But you said you had it here. Things like that I have to get this late. It's been a month since the trial. Must you, must you have these exhibits? In order to prove it to you fully, yes. But if he doesn't come in two seconds more... I can't stay here much longer myself. The chaplains will unarmed. 
I shall have to take over before the end. Yes, yes, come in. Sorry to have been so long, sir. I could have sworn it was in one place, and lo and behold, it turns up somewhere else. Never mind that. Did you get the exhibits? It's all here, sir, in this suitcase. Where shall I put it? Put it on Colonel Andrews' desk. Ah, now let's see. Move the lamp over here, will you? Uh, and about Mr. Herbert Gale, sir. Uh, where is he? Out in the hall, sir. You want to see him now? Yes, yes, my lad. Very much so. Ask him to come in. You can come in, sir. This way. Thank you. Ah, uh, morning, Herbert. Glad to see you. Uh, sit down. Thank you, Colonel Andrews. Let me have your hat and coat. Uh, this, um, this is Dr. Gideon Fell. Uh, uh, how do you do? Uh, the warder said you wanted to see me. I came, of course, but... Do you think it was quite the right thing to do? Well, why not? Well, people might think I was holding a grudge against Helen. Because of Phil, you know. And you don't hold any grudge? No. I pity that poor girl from the bottom of my heart. I only wish I hadn't had to testify against her. But what else could I do? You mean you'd like to help her even now? Of course I would. If there's anything I can do to to soothe her last moment... There is something you can do, Mr. Gale. Well... You can come with us to the condemned cell. Are you joking? No. But wouldn't it be horrible for Helen? Yes, probably. But as you point out, she has only a very short time to live. Yes. Excuse me, but uh, what have you got in that suitcase? In uh, this suitcase, Mr. Gale? A flattened bullet. The bullet that killed your brother. A thirty-two revolver. A tweed coat bloodstained. A tweed waistcoat, also bloodstained. Charfell, what do you expect to prove with that stuff? Will Mr. Herbert Gale go with us to the condemned cell? Of course, if you think I can do any good there. Then, with your permission, I propose to prove that a straight line is the shortest distance between two points. <laughs> Will you walk into my parlor? <laughs> I'm very sorry for you, Helen. Please believe that. Thank you. I shouldn't have intruded at this painful time. Believe me, Helen. But Dr. Fell and the Colonel here made me come to see you. You mean you come to confess? Confess? What should I confess? You didn't see me shoot Phil. You know you didn't. I'm sorry, Helen. I pity you and I bear you no malice even now. But you did shoot poor old Phil. You shot him in cold blood after you'd asked him to put up his hand. How high did he put up his hand? Uh, I beg your pardon? I said, how high did he put up his hand? Look here, you're only upsetting poor Helen. Is there any purpose in going over all this in the last few minutes before, before the hangman... We might even illustrate what happened with a little experiment. I have here in this suitcase a bloodstained tweed coat. And a bloodstained waistcoat. You see them, Mr. Gale? I see them, yes. I should like you to take off your own coat and waistcoat. I should then like you to put on this coat and this waistcoat. I do no such thing. Why not? Haven't you tortured poor Helen enough? Colonel Andrews, I appeal to you. I, I, I don't see what the game is, but where's the harmony? Helen's feelings. Never mind my feelings, Herbert. Now, I've only got a few minutes left. Put on the coat and waistcoat. You hear a condemned person's last request, Mr. Gale. Will you do it? Yes, if you insist. I still don't see what this is all about. If something isn't done very soon... Uh, Colonel Andrews, sir? Yes, Harris? I thought I'd better tell you, sir, that the chaplain's here and the witnesses are ready and the, and the other person, too. You mean the hangman, don't you? You mean the hangman? Yeah, easy, easy. He's got to come and bind her hands, sir. It's five minutes to eight. Sorry, fellow, but this has got to stop. I must ask you to clear out of here immediately while we... For God's sake, man, wait. I can prove it now. You can prove what? I can prove Mr. Herbert Gale lied when he sentenced this girl to death. You must be out of your mind. You can't do any such thing. Oh, yes, I can. Do you notice, all of you, that he's wearing the dead man's coat and waistcoat? All right. Suppose I am. 
What about it? You will imagine, Mr. Gale, with this powerful imagination of yours, that I am threatening you with a revolver. Now, hold up your hands. What the devil are you gambling Hold up your hands, sir. High above your head. I won't do it. You better do it, haven't you? Better do it. Do as you tell your man. I'm asking you now. That's it, Mr. Gale. Don't let your hands tremble when you raise them. Just lift your hand higher, higher still, while I'm threatening you with a revolver. Now look at his coat, everybody. Look at the coat. I refuse the Don't lower your hands, Mr. Gale, and the rest of you. Look at his coat. The coat, it rises when he lifts his hand. But of course it does. And the bullet hole in the coat, you notice, rises with it. But the waistcoat is buttoned close to the body. The waistcoat doesn't move. I think I begin to see. The bullet hole in the coat has risen at least four inches above the corresponding hole in the waistcoat. Yet, the bullet, you told me, penetrated in a dead straight line through coat, waistcoat, and shirt. Therefore, Philip Gale could not possibly have had his hands raised when he was shot. It's a damned lie! It was a damned lie, sir. <laughs> You killed Philip Gale yourself. When Helen Barton walked into the middle of your crime, you knocked her out with a weapon that left no bruise and put the revolver into her hand. Then you discovered, as a gift from heaven, that she had lost her memory. You could tell any lying story you liked. But it's upset the apple cart now. The prosecution, the evidence, the verdict were all based on the evidence of the shooting of a man who had his hands raised. Destroy that single lie... And you create the reasonable doubt that destroys the whole case. This is true, Colonel Andrews. Is it true? Can't you at least say something? Harris. Yes, sir? Do you know the private telephone line in my office? Yes, sir. Get me the home secretary. <laughs> Eight. We come to the end of our present group of stories in the series, Appointment with Fear. If you have been pleased, if you have been entertained, if you have been able to say that only the graveyards have yawned, then we are deeply grateful. Indeed, with the slightest encouragement, I, who am amused by such things, should return to tell you more tales of corpses and the midnight hour. But until that happy day when we meet again by some evil crossroad of the future, this is your storyteller, the man in black, saying good night and goodbye. <laughs>